before we've even got started. 14 pound. That is a fish of a lifetime. Very simple tactics and we're gonna show you how to do it. the magnificent River Trent. Now, we're at Cromwell Weir. This is one of the most famous bits of barbel fishing in the country. We've been very kindly invited here by our friends at Shakespeare, who are the exclusive tackle sponsor of the Get Fishing campaign. So a massive thanks for Nathan for getting us along. We've also got James Roach here, who is an expert here on the River Trent. He catches loads of massive barbel and chub. So I reckon he might get a couple as well. But the point of this video is to show you it's actually fairly easy to come and have a go at barbel fishing. All the equipment that we're using today is not really high-end expensive stuff. It's really good, affordable tackle from Shakespeare. And, well, we've already caught a 14 pounder. What more do you want? <laughs> I'm excited. Do you know when you get really excited? I couldn't sleep last night. So we're down at Cromwell Weir. This is like a barbel mecca. So we're destined not to catch anything now, aren't we? So there's, there's some seriously big fish. Like seriously, seriously big fish in this bit river. So like any fish, your next fish could be like a fish of a lifetime, easily. I mean, them peg ones over there, that's where everyone seems to want to go. That is like the, the hot spot. It's probably the best barbel peg in the country, I would have thought. Yeah. So we couldn't get in there, could we? No. <laughs> We've not done bad. We've not done bad, mate. Now we are fishing in fresh water today. So we do need a fishing license from the Environment Agency. If you're 12 or under, you don't need one. If you're between 13 and 16, you need to get a junior license, but they are free, link in the description. If you're 17 over, you need to get a full paying adult. We're using two rods today, so the standard two rod fishing license is the one that we will need. So how are we gonna tackle this venue. So most of my feeder fishing, I'd be using a setup exactly like this. This is a Shakespeare Challenge XT. Um, now these kits, they come with everything you need to have a go at feeder fishing. So uh, you get the rod, you get a 10 or a 12 foot version, um, a real 40,000 size, which is kind of what you would use for most of your river fishing. They also come with a little box of goodies. Now in here, you get a disgorger, a couple of rigs, feeder, weights, um, and basically all the little leads and, and all the little clips that you need to get out fishing. But these kits are really, really good quality. And this is what I'd be using for most of my river fishing. Now, where we're fishing today, on the trunk is tidal. There's a lot of flow. And these uh, 12 foot feeder rods are around a two pound test curve. And it's a little bit light for what we're doing today. So most of my river fishing, this is what I'd be using. But today, because there's so much flow, we need a bigger weight to hold bottom. And what this means is we've got to up our gear. We've beefed the kit up. We are going to be using a Challenge XT carp rod this is a three pound carp rod now really for this type of fishing i would be using a 12 foot rod that bit of extra length is handy actual fact today i'm testing the 10 foot one which is what i caught that 14 pounder on yesterday so 
it works. Right, the reel, um, the, the, I should say these carp kits come very similar to the feeder kits with everything you need to go carp fishing. Um, the reel, I've just started trying this out last night, it's the Cypri uh, XT80 from Shakespeare. I've literally, the first couple of casts, and I've caught a massive barbel. So that obviously does the job. This style of fishing is pretty easy. I haven't had to plumb the depth up. I don't know what I'm fishing over. I don't know how deep it is. I've just chucked it out and fishing in the middle. It's kind of as easy as that. Right, we're gonna look at a very basic feeder setup for catching big fish on rivers, but we're gonna keep it as simply as possible as always. So we're gonna want some sort of a weight. Obviously, We've had, we've seen the river trend. There's a lot of flow going on where we are at Cromwell Weir. So my intention initially was to use a massive feeder like that. That's a five ounce feeder. Um, but that unbelievably was not holding bottom. So we moved over to one of them. That is uh, a Coram Gripper lead and is six ounces which is very very heavy it's about as heavy as you're going to get for your freshwater fishing but with these little ridges on what happens is it sort of seems to stick to the river bottom now you can see some little gaps here as well on either side of the weight you can actually crush some of your ground bait into there so it's almost acting a little bit like a feeder so that is what we used for this session as always, I would practice sort of setting everything up before you go fishing because, for example, if you've just got a couple of hours, you don't want to be there setting everything up for an hour and a half. So have a quick go at home uh, before you go. We're going to be using the Camo Bolt and Run Kit, right, from Corum. In this, you're going to get four bits in the packet. You'll get a swivel, one of these funny looking things, an even funnier looking thing, and that which is a anti-tangle sleeve. So we have our main line. This is the line connected to the reel. The first thing we do is put this bit on and we just put it through the line like so. Then we put this funny corkscrew looking thing on like so. Then all we've got left to put on is this swivel bit. So you've got a little clip bit here. That's what the rig goes into. And then you've got a round bit. Now on the round bit, we're gonna connect that to the main line. The best fishing knot. What is the best fishing knot? The most asked question on the Get Fishing pages. So I personally would like to use a grinner knot. If I'm tying a swivel on or a hook on that doesn't need a hair, I'd be using a grinner knot, fairly simple knot, a nice long tag end, right? We're holding that with our fingers. We're gonna come back with a tag end here, and then we're gonna hold that, right? The tag end now goes through this loop over both bits of line five times. One, two, three, four, five. Moisten that knot. We're going to put a bit of saliva on it. Right, we're going to pull the tag end a little bit. And then we can hold the main line and the swivel. And we're just going to pull that tight. Probably one of the strongest knots that you're going to ever use. All we do then is cut off the tag end. We've got quite a long tag end there, doesn't matter. Now cut that off. You see I've left a little bit of a tag, it doesn't have to be right up close. Right, now we've got a weight and we can connect it to this bit, which is the first bit we put on. It's a bit like a Chinese puzzle. But you'll see you can connect the swivel through there. That is really, really safe. These are brilliant, these cool room clips. Right, now if we pull all this together, you see there's a little sort of corkscrew bit here. If you just roll that on there, that is connected. Now the good thing about these camo bolt and run kits is, you'll see that weight's not moving, right? 
So when the fish takes it, it's going to take that weight and it's going to be hooked straight away. But if that got snagged up in a tree, shopping trolley, whatever's in the river that you don't know is there, that will come free if it gets in any trouble. So now that's free running. So if this line was to ever break, the fish can get away. Now all we need to do is put a rig onto here. Rigs, barbel rigs. Now I would probably encourage you to always make your own barbel rigs or any rigs really. I do understand most of the people watching this video, it gets a little bit much, the amount of information needed to go fishing. So we're actually using some cool room ready made rigs here. Now this is, uh, these are made with mono and we're gonna be using uh, size eight hooks on 15 pound mono. These are 100 centimeters long, these rigs. So for river fishing, for this type of fishing, because there's a lot of flow, we have a longer rig because when the ground bait is coming off of here, there's a flow and the ground bait's going down the river. So that's, we want our hook bait a bit further away than we would in a lake generally. We take one off. 100 centimeters so they're quite long these rigs now do you remember this bit that came with the camo bolt and run kit we haven't used that yet this is going to slide over our hook length and this is an anti-tangle sleeve now because we've already got a loop here and a knot you'll see one of the ends is very very fine now that is not actually going to go over there so what we're going to do is we're just going to cut A little bit off, right? So we've got a bigger hole. What we're going to do is we're going to get a baiting needle and we're going to show you what this baiting needle is actually for in a minute. But if we put this anti-tangle sleeve over the baiting needle, like that, you've got a little hook there which can go over your rig. And then we can put the anti-tangle sleeve over. You can see is on the rig. All will make sense in a minute, hopefully. So with the loop that was already tied, all we're gonna do is clip it over this swivel that we've already connected. Right? The anti-tangle sleeve that we've put on, we push that up and we put it over this swivel just to make sure that rig's not gonna come off. It keeps it all safe. It also stops the line tangling. Now, what we need to do is we're gonna pull this all together quite tight. Just put it together like that. Now, that's basically ready to go fishing. So what this anti-tangle sleeve has done, it's kicking the rig away from the weight so it's not gonna get tangled up when you cast. Now the only thing left to do is put some bait onto our size eight hook and hair. To do this, we're gonna need a cool room pellet stop. I'm using clear ones, doesn't really matter what color. We've got a 12 mil robin red pellet. All we do is get the 12 mil rod red pellet, we put it onto this baiting needle. On the end of the hair, there's a loop. And what we do is we put this little hook on the baiting needle over the loop. Then we can thread the pellet onto the loop. Now we can't use a normal bait stop for this because with pellets, they come off. This is where we use these cool room uh, pellet stops. Right, now all we've done is put the pellet stop over the loop and then we can push that back. That's never ever gonna come off. You'll see uh, there's a little bit of silicone tubing. You can pull that round to make the hair slightly shorter. Don't worry that there's a bit of separation between the pellet and the hook. That's absolutely fine, because then Barb are gonna suck that in. We've got our main line that goes onto our weight. 
with our rig attached with the anti-tangle sleeve there to stop it tangling 100 centimeters of mono line to a lovely presented robin red pellet that's a good safe rig and hopefully if all goes well it's going to catch you some massive barbel Right, we have connected um, everything. We're ready to fish. Now, we're gonna use the Dynamate Big Fish. This is what I was using last night. We're gonna come in, put sub into this bucket. You might wanna get a bit closer, James. But we're gonna put a bit in there. So that's Dynamite Big Fish. Uh, I don't really know what it is, sort of marine halibut and, and hemp. Um, it smells nice and fishy. Just to add something else, we're obviously using a 12 mil Robin Red on the hook. We've also got some four mil of the same Robin Red pellet. So these are exactly the same, just a bit smaller. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some of them in there as well. And it's just adding a little bit more sort of substance to the mix. And then we're just gonna put a bit of water in Remember with the water, you can always put a bit more in, but you can't take it out. We're making it a lot wetter, it's a lot thicker, just so it can stay on the riverbed a little bit more. Now, last night I was using it like that, and half hour before I caught my fish, I put a little bit of semi calcid. It's a Robin Red oil. Did this make the difference? I don't know, but we're gonna put a couple of squirts of that in. And it's just making it even more oily than what it already was. Now what we're going to do is we're going to wedge loads in there. That's what them holes are for. As I say, this is a lot wetter than you would normally use it in a lake. But that's how we want it. And we can spill as much as we can in there. When it's in the water, it's all going to slowly come out. It's nice and thick and wet and it's going to slowly roll down and hopefully, Mr. Barbel is going to find that. So, uh, what we've done, we've cast out, we have put the rod onto this. Come and have a look at this, James. We've got an Advanta pod here. This is really nice. Um, a new bit of kit that I've just testing out this weekend. And yeah, lovely bit of kit, nice and stable. So we've put the rod onto here, nice and steady. Now, if a big fish does take your bait, which we're kind of hoping for, these barbel are massively powerful. So what's gonna happen, if there's no give, the rod will just go flying into the river and you'll never see it again. So what we've got here is a Shakespeare Cypre XT80. Um, covered in a bit more mud than it should be, mainly because um, it fell in the mud after I caught a big fish last night. But you'll see when a fish takes the bait, it's got a bit of room. So the line is gonna come out. And the reason this is, is because it's a bait runner. Now this bit on the back here, when that's engaged, line can come out. As soon as you reel, when you've got the fish, it clicks back down and the line doesn't come off. I say the line doesn't come off, if it pulls really hard, you've still got your clutch on the front here. So if it pulls really hard, there you can take a bit of line off and you can adjust that by going like that. But that's really important the clutch is set. If that's rock solid, that fish, wow, something's gonna break somewhere, it's gonna damage the fish. So make sure it has still got a bit of room. But when you set up onto your pod like you have, put that in, line comes out, you're good to go. Um, follow me up here, James. Now, one thing you do need to make sure of is you are prepared when you do catch a fish. So you need your landing net, 
That's a 30 inch landing net, which is perfect for river fishing. A nice strong handle. Make sure that is around everything. So if you catch one, it's to hand and you can use it. The next thing is if you come up here, really importantly, you have to have everything set up before you catch the fish. So up here, long before I caught a fish, I've got one of these. This is unhooking mat. This is a pro logic one. It's basically like a bean baggy type of thing. Um, so that is laid on the floor before I've even cast out. So it's all ready. Now, the reason we have this, we cannot put a big, beautiful fish onto the grass. Um, there's sharp bits and bobs and twigs. It could damage the fish. Even worse, if you're fishing on gravel or concrete, obviously we can't put these beautiful fish, any type of fish onto the grass. So that is what the unhooking mat is for. Another thing we've got here, a way sling. Now I put this onto the mat. So when I catch one, the fish can be put onto here and then we can weigh the fish. The other thing these are good for is returning the fish because once it's in there, you can zip it up and basically you can carry that down to the water. The fish is there and you can release it really nice and easily onto the water. You don't want to pick up the fish, walk down a bank to put it into the water. That's not good. You need something like this. Um, so it's a way sling slash retaining sling, even though we're not retaining any fish, really, really handy bit of kit to have. Um, we really need to look after the fish. I can't stress that enough. Uh, I know we're catching them, but we've got to make sure they go back unharmed so they can kind of get on with their day. All the bits and bobs that we're using today can be brought from Angling Direct. If you've got an Angling Direct store near you, get in there and have a chat with them because they've got loads of actual Angling Trust licensed qualified coaches in store to help you get out fishing on your own. They've got all the advice. They've definitely got all the kit you would ever need. So go and check them out. They've also got a brilliant website, which is where I got all my stuff from today. And basically, if you spend over 9 dollars it's free delivery. Has he got a bite? I thought it was. <laughs> I've caught loads of fish today. I've had loads of little roach and dats yeah. and perch. I've even had a little tiny rud as well off the tidal trout, which is quite special. <laughs> They're probably rarer than barbell in this river. But I've not had any proper fish yet. Well, if it's not on camera, it didn't really count, James. I oh, know. <laughs> well, we, we are we're coming into the good time of the day, though. It's starting to get a bit darker. It's been really bright and sunny today, so it's been really difficult condi conditions, but it's starting to look really good now. So, fingers crossed, we'll be in for a, a few barbel in the evening and through the night as well. Do barbel feed, generally feed more at night? Uh, no, not necessarily. It's just that the conditions, it's, you tend to catch a few more during the night. I mean, most of my fishing, is in the evening after work and it tends to be at night so I, I catch a lot of fish during the night but I know a lot of people do catch barbel during the day and catch loads of barbel during the day they tend to just do slightly different tactics perhaps a little bit more subtle um, rather than big baits and big heavy feeders and big leads just a little bit more subtle techniques and, and tactics and you can still catch them during the day it's just that sometimes they're, they're a bit more greedy during the night and a bit easier to catch. You say mine was easy? <laughs> Not at all, dude. It was a hard earned, well deserved fish that was. And a serious fish with that as well. Quality fish. Right, James, um, we are using bait alarms here. Can we have a look and see what it's all about? Yeah, so these are, I, when I'm using two rods, I like to use bite alarms. It yeah. gives a bit of an indication of what's going on, um, especially using bite alarms. When you're using big baits, so when barbel comes along, you tend to know about it, you get a big bite, but sometimes they could be quite subtle as well. So it gives you a good indication about what's going on. So these are bite alarms. What happens is that as soon as, as soon as the fish sort of has a touch the line, so you might get line bite or, or takes the bait, you'll get an indication. So in these ones, as soon as the line moves, you'll get an indication on what's going on, uh, which is very clever. <laughs> James has got the swans by look at him. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> Every swan in the river trend. 
Jimmy, what's happening? I've got a fishing eye. Yeah, of course I have. Straight in. You've only been fishing for about half an hour. I'm pretty sure it's based on what I've told you. Yeah. <laughs> it's good fish, Jimmy. It's just got dark, isn't it? And it seems like this stuff's starting to happen now. There wasn't a lot happening during the daylight, but it's... I've got the crocs on. I fell in last night doing this. You're such a carp angler with your crocs on. Whee! <laughs> it's only a small one. How was that, Jimmy? <laughs> Mate. I literally, because I've been filming all day, I haven't really... Oh, mate, that's not far off double figures. I reckon it's nine or ten, isn't it? Yeah. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll rest him in the water for a bit. Make sure he's nice and rested. And then we'll get him out for some pictures. And have a little look at him. Happy days. <laughs> what are we saying, Jimmy? So, just say it's over ten, yeah. Yeah, so ten. Ten and a half pounds. Ten and a half. Enough. So aren't it? Oh, Two fish. <laughs> Every fish over is a double figure fish. Oh yeah, unless they're double figure. Oh, I wouldn't have even net. Correct. <laughs> About ten and a half pound. Bigger tail on this one though. Absolutely spectacular fish from the River Trent. Look at the mouths. You can tell why they're called a barbel. And we're going to get her back nice, quickly, and safely. Don't you chuck them straight back, we just let her sort herself out. Oh, she looks bigger in the net, doesn't she? Yeah, it's a good fish. See already, she's flipping away. Kicking off. Well done, Mr. Willis. Trend. That's where it's all happening. Completed it, mate. Reggie's got one in the net. Oh, you see, he's resting that fish. Let it get its breath back. Resting, resting, resting. No rush. No rush. Got a lovely fish. Let him recover. This one's really enjoying the show. <laughs> They don't, <laughs> they don't even woke up. Good fish, isn't it? It's a stocky fish, isn't it? Look at that. That is bloody hell. Wide. That I would look looking at it now, that is wide, isn't it? <laughs> 15 pounds of tidal river trend barbell. An absolute unit. It's a quite a short fish, it's very stocky. I love this river, it's an inc absolutely incredible place. The best thing about it is it's all on a day ticket as well. Anybody can come down here and catch fish like this. Awesome. Yes, Roachy! What are you saying about that, Mr. Swan? <laughs> Come on! She's getting greedy now. I know, I can't believe it. It doesn't really happen very often. It's in November. <laughs> Two more scarf at the same time. That's a good one as well, isn't it? What we got now? Another 15 pounder. Can't believe it to be fair. 
and this is part of a double take as well. I've still got the other one in the net, which uh, not bad for November. <laughs> it shows what a special place this river is. And it I looks was, bigger, that one, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? But yeah, it's, it, it looked bigger, but it's pretty much exactly the same size as the last one. Amazing, well done. Well done, mate. Yeah, absolutely buzzing. Absolutely buzzing. How big is this one, James? Twelve eight. So another another double figure fish. We've not had a, we've not had a fish with more than ten pound yet, have we, Jimmy? No, we've not. No, no. Everything's double figure. We're doing all right. We're definitely doing very well. Which is pretty special, isn't it? Is this normal? No, it's definitely <laughs> not normal. We're doing something right. A bit of luck as well. But yeah, absolutely blown away. Absolutely blown away. That's all we've got time for. We hope you've enjoyed the video. If you found it useful in any way, please do consider liking and subscribing to our social media pages at Get Into Fishing on Instagram and Twitter. You can find us Get Fishing on Facebook. And of course, our wonderful YouTube channel is there to help you get fishing on your own.